Hi, brothers and sisters. I trust you're well. I trust you've had a good day. I trust um, everything is going all well for you and uh, you're keeping safe. Uh, welcome to our chat on the sofa, sermon on the sofa, whichever one you want to call it. I trust um, you are being blessed by some of the things that you're hearing and um, we want to start with a prayer. So I want you to pray and just thank God for everything. The Bible says, and everything, let's just give thanks to God for this is the will of God concerning us. So we want to start by thanking God for his will and his grace, his mercy upon us. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We bless you for your grace, your mercy over our lives, Lord. We thank you for how far you brought us. We thank you, Lord, that you have kept us alive up to this point. Father, people have died all around us but we thank you that you are still keeping us safe you are still father looking after us and for that we don't take it for granted we thank you we give you praise holy spirit speak to us oh god let the entrance of your word bring light to everyone i pray oh god that you bless us oh god you bless our homes lord them that have been threatened with financially because of their source of employment that they are losing their jobs father i pray for the favor of the lord that you cause them oh god even to have favor receive favor get a better job than the one they are losing and the one they've lost in the name of Jesus. Let their finances become even better in the name of Jesus. We pray, we thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Now, Holy Spirit, I pray that you speak to these lips of clay. Let the entrance of your word bring light to everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray that you bless us because we have looked into your word. We give you praise. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the other day I started talking about how God tests our faiths. Why would God test our faith? What does God want when he puts us through difficulties, trials, you know, when we go through afflictions? Like the whole world is going through affliction right now. Um, what is the purpose of it? Somebody say, if God is all-knowing, God is all-sovereign, God is all-powerful, why would he subject the whole world to a pandemic? Why would the, this world go through what the crisis that we are going through? Why do I go through the crisis I go through? What is in it? What, what does God, what is, why is God, you know, doing this to me? If I've served God all this while, why would I go through what I'm going through? You know, I would answer that, that same question by saying, listen to what Job said. Job, Job said that if God has given me good things and I've received good things of the Lord, why would I complain when God gives me bad things? Why would I complain when I go through trials? You know, there's a purpose for everything we go through. There's a purpose for the trials we've gone through, the trials we are going through, you know, and, and the afflictions that we, you may have lost your job, you may, your economy is bad, and everything's in a downturn, pandemic is all around us, people are dying, people are getting sick around us. There's, there's a reason why all these things happen. And if we get to know why we go through them and what God is trying to teach us through the difficulty, we will be a bit circumspect in our you know, feelings and we'll be a bit circumspect in what we say. So let us look at um, James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. The Bible says that, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith worketh, works patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Hallelujah. And in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, the Bible says that we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, to those who are the called according to his purpose. So I believe that these two scriptures tell us that our trials, the tragedies, the trials, the you know mishaps that we go through, they are working for us. You know, James is saying that count it all joy. Be, 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 be joyful, be glad, which means that don't lose, don't let your emotions run awry on you when you fall into temptation, when you go through trials and testing, knowing that the testing of your faith is working for you something that is good there is something behind the inner workings of trials there's something that you are learning after you after you've gone through the storm you get up you rise up at the end of the storm better than you were before you go through the storm become a better person for the storms that you have gone through so we're going to look at quite a few things that uh, the 20 reasons i'm going i don't know whether i can give you all 20 but a few reasons why God allows trials to come our way. The first reason is to trial helps us in our perseverance. God wants to work on our perseverance. So he takes us through trials just so that you will know that, listen, 
you need to persevere. In uh, James chapter 1 verse 12, it says that blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he, is being, when he has been proved, approved, he will uh, receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. You know, this scripture is saying that be happy. The word blessed be, means be happy. Fortunate is the man who endures temptation. It didn't say that fortunate is the man who avoids temptation. It, it's saying that fortunate is the man who goes through temptation. When he endures the temptation, he is approved. You know, without the test, there's no promotion. Every, every one of us who have, have written an exam, uh, written a, text, a test before, and you know, when you're going through the test time, the period of testing, you're not happy. You're not happy to sit in the exam room, but you need the exam room to give you the certificate. You need the exam room condition, that affliction that you have to go through to study for the exam and writing the exam to pass. You need that, that testing to give you a testimony, to give you a certificate that you have indeed finished the course. So it's very important that we go through the, 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 the trials. And when we go through it, let us persevere. Let, you see, trials is just teaching us how to persevere, how to be be uh, resistant to the, the trial. To, to I said I said that the, the other day that with, without gravity we cannot walk. You know, without the you know as gravity, airplanes cannot take take off. You know, you need gravity. You need the the pressure for the of the of the waves the taller, for the ships to go through it. So the pressure is important. It helps you. It makes you a better person than before. So trials is very, very important. So in, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, the Bible says, let us not be weary in doing good for in the proper time we shall reap if we do not give up. You know, the thing with us sometimes as human beings, as Christians, is that we tend to give up. We tend to feel, you know, tired. We tend to feel frustrated. We tend to feel that we've had enough, it's time to give up. But I want us to get to a place where we don't give up easily. Be persistent, be perseverant. Even when we are going through adversity, do not give up. Job said that though he tries me, though he slays me, yet will I trust him. Yet will I, I, I persevere. Job was such a persevering person that even when he was going through a trial, he at the point in his desperation, in his trial, the Bible says that he prayed for his friends. Even when his friends came to feel sorry for him and they came to gather around him and everything, like encouraging and talking to him, he was rather praying for them. He was a very persevering person. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 to 36, the Bible says, So do not throw away your confidence. If it will be richly rewarded, do, you need to persevere so that when you have done the will of God, you receive what he has promised you. So perseverance is very important. And the trials that we are going through is testing our faith in God. It's testing our perseverance. Are we still going to persist in serving God? Are we still going to persist in believing God? Are we still going to persist in believing the, 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 what the pastors are telling us? You know, somebody said the other day to me that, now I don't believe the pastors because if the pastors were really men of God, they would have seen in the, in the eye of the Spirit, uh, they would have read and told us that COVID-19 was going to hit in 2020. They would have known and predicted it. How come nobody saw it? How come nobody predicted it? You know, these people are all lies. So now I've lost my trust and my confidence in so-called prophets and men of God and all that. Listen, trials must happen. Temptation must go, in, go on in our life. But the, the thing that is working is our persistence and trust and belief in God so that we don't lose faith. So I, I want to encourage you that, listen, whatever you're going through, there is a purpose for it. And the first reason is so that it works out to us, our, uh, our, to our benefit when we become perseverant, when we persist through uh, trials. The next one, the next one, now let me be honest, the next one is that I don't know. The next one is that there's sometimes no reason for what we go through. We don't know why we are going through what we are going through, but we are going through it anyway. Sometimes we must admit that we don't know. Instead of going crazy and trying to find out why uh, we must trust God, why has God uh, you know, forsaken us, why has God abandoned us, why, what is happening to us, why is the, is the church not receiving any solution through this difficult, this difficult situation we are going through, why are we not getting a, a relief, why is they, they not discovering you know, uh, uh, 
uh, uh, vaccine for this pandemic. What's going on? We don't know. In, in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 and 9, about, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As, as the heavens are higher than, than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We cannot think for God. We don't know why we go through what we go through. This is what we know. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, as for I know the plans I have towards you, declares the Lord. They are plans of, to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you a future and hope. So let's trust in the hand that we don't see. That all that we are going through, it's working for our good. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. We just read in Romans 8, 28. You know, for them that are called according to his purpose. Let's just have this belief that we don't know why we are going through what we are going through. But we know the God we serve. And that he is able to sustain us. He is able to keep us. He is able to protect us. In Proverbs 3, verse 5, it says, The Bible says, Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. You know, see, just seek His will. Seek, verse 6 says, Seek His will in all you do and He will show you or He will direct your path. Let's trust Him in our, now with, with our lives. And let him order our path. Even through the pandemic, even through COVID-19, even through trials, we believe that God will keep us. The third reason, or the third thing that, reason why we go through trials. Sometimes we suffer because of our own mistakes. Sometimes we go through because of what we have done wrong, what we uh, have been done. Sometimes we suffer because of our own foolishness. You know, I'm sure you and I will say that we have we have paid some price that we didn't have to pay and we know that it was all our own stupidity you know sometimes you've got to be honest and say that it's me I, I i've done it i've brought this on myself you know don't it's not everything we must blame it on god or blame it on somebody else sometimes you've got to accept that you have you are, you have done this to yourself you know hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says that my people are destroyed for lack of wisdom sometimes it's lack of wisdom because you have rejected knowledge i have rejected you as my priest because you have ignored the law of the lord i have also ignored your children sometimes it's just ignorance that makes us go through what we are going through in proverbs 19 verse 2 and 3 the Bible, desire without knowledge is not good how much more will hasty feet miss the way a person's own foolishness or folly leads, it, leads to their room, yet their heart rages against the, the Lord. You know, Let us assume responsibility. Galatians 6, 5 says that assume responsibility. Take, take the responsibility. I have caused it. I've done this. You know, I don't know. It's my own stupidity that has brought me in this place. You know, The Bible talks about the prodigal son. The prodigal son, the Bible says, and when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food enough to eat and I perish in this place? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to arise and go to my father. And I'll say to my father, Father, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you. Make me like one of your servants. And the Bible says, when his father saw him, afar, the father ran and fell on his neck and, and kissed him. You know, so sometimes let us own up to our own mistakes and say, listen, I've brought this up on myself. Number four, God is making you go through what you are going through to humble you. Sometimes the, it's just the trial, the all the, the adversities. It's just so that you, you, God will teach you humility. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, about that, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me become from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh. This is Paul talking. A messenger of Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. He was saying that because of so much, his uh, much knowledge, anointing and everything, power and prowess, he was getting puffed up. So God sent a messenger of Satan to buffet him. And the only reason was to humble him. Sometimes God needs to get our attention. You and I will admit that through this pandemic and, and through this lockdown that we've gone through, it has drawn us closer to God. It has made us, you know, uh, uh, the fear of the unknown has driven us closer to, to God, to prayer and everything. So sometimes 
you know, these adversities are there to humble us because we're so busy with our lives. We're so busy that we had just removed God from our thinking and from everything we did. So we, God needed to grab our attention to the difficulties. Sometimes the yeah, difficulties that we go through is because God needs to get our attention. I pray that we will not go so far that God will need to bring a, diff, a very bad experience to us to grab our attention. Let us keep our mind stayed on him. In Proverbs 18, 12, the Bible says, Before destruction, a man's heart is haughty, but humility comes before honor. You need humility so that you'll be honored. So God will have to make you go through some adversities and, and trials. In 1 Peter 5, 6, and 8, the Bible says, Humble yourself before the hand of God, the, of God's mighty Humble yourself, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due season. Cast all your anxieties upon him because he cares for you. Be alert and sober, knowing that your enemy, the devil, is walking to and fro, looking for whom he may devour. You know, so sometimes God, God will humble us if we are not humbling ourselves. You know, the next one, number five, is that God disciplines his children. He teaches us discipline. So sometimes he has to discipline us. You know, sometimes you have to go through a period of hardship. You have to go through a period of losing your job. Not because God wants you to, to, but because you are going off. So God needs to, just like any loving father or any loving parent, when your child is going off, sometimes you've got to uh, whip them into line or, or you know, punish them so that they, they, they correct their, themselves. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5 to 11, the Bible says that, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as, his, as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are all illegitimate and not sons. Therefore, furthermore, we, we have had human fathers who have corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not more readily be in subjection to the father of, of, of spirit and life? For they indeed... For they indeed for a few days chasing us as seems best to them. But he who but he for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening to those who are being trained by it. You know, so the, the scripture itself explanatory says that, you know, when we are going through the trials, we don't enjoy it. But when we go through it, it gives us a peaceable fruit of righteousness and we are trained by the problem, the, the, the chastening of, of the, the discipline that we go through. Any good father would discipline his children. That's what the scripture is saying. And if you are not a child, if you are not a child who is disciplined by your parents, then you are illegitimate. Because the heart of a father is sometimes drawn to disciplining their, their children. It's, it's very simple. In Proverbs 3, verse 11 to 13, verse, my child, do not reject the Lord's discipline and do not get angry when he corrects you. This is all that I'm trying to say. That Let us not get angry with God. Let us not get to the place where we become so furious and we, we stop praying. We stop even trusting God because of what we have gone through. Never get to the place where you are angry with God. For the Lord correct those, verse 12 says, the Lord correct those just as parents correct the child they delight in. Happy is the person whom, who finds wisdom, the one who gets understanding. So we need to allow ourselves to learn, to glean insight from all our bad experience, all our you know, trials. Let's glean, let's know that there's a reason why God is allowing these things to come to us. So you can become more dependent on the Lord. And that's the next reason. Number six, so you go through trials so that you can become more dependent on the Lord. Amen.
So 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10, the brother, each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ may, be, may work through me, that I may take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and all the troubles that I suffer for Christ. For whom, for when I am weak, then I'm strong. This Paul speaking, he says that all these things is working for me. I take pleasure in, 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 in my adversities, in my weaknesses. Why? Because they, when I'm weak, then he's strong. In my weakness, in my uh, trials, in my downtime, then his strength is made perfect in my life. You know, let us understand that God is working in us both to do to will and to do of his good pleasure. He has us. He knows what we need. So sometimes he, he, he does some of these things so that we can depend on him and him alone. Because we as human beings, we often tend to, you know, believe in our own strength sometimes and not in his power. You know, sometimes we go on, we just tend to, you know, once we do something and it's working, we believe that the thing that we are doing is what is making it work. So we just get more faith in the things we are doing. And so that we forget the God that is enabling us to. You know, so Deuteronomy 8, 18 says that you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he that gives you the ability to create wealth. It is he, you know, and sometimes when we forget that he is the one behind it, he needs sometimes to pull us, you know, pull us, you know, hard. Sometimes, you, you know, like a rider, a horse rider, we yank the, the, the uh, rope that is holding the, 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 the bit in the mouth to, to just for the horse to understand that there's somebody in charge. You don't take off, you know. So sometimes God needs to get our attention. He yanks us just, just so that we can learn, you know, to, to, to know that we are not independent. We have somebody that is making things work in our lives. Number seven says that God allows trials and tribulations to come our way because he wants to spend time with us. You know, sometimes, like I was saying, that we tend to trust in our own might, in our own plans, in our own, you know, connections. So we tend to just ignore or we tend to just get on with it without realizing that God is the one. So sometimes he makes us go through some of these difficulties so that we get closer to him. You know, we are doing all these things for for God. You know, we spend quality time. Sometimes all these trials, God wants to spend time with us. So he will bring affliction so that our minds will come home. They will run to him. And that's what he wants us to do. In Revelation chapter 2, from verse 2 to 5, the Bible said, I know your works, how you work hard and never give up. I I know you do not put up with the false teachers of evil people, the false teaching of evil people. You have tested those who say they are apostles but really are not and found them to be liars. You are you have you are patient. You have your sorry, you have patience and have suffered troubles for my name's sake. And I've not given up. So these guys were persevering. But I have this one thing against you. You have left your first love. You have left the love you had, you had in the beginning. So remember where you have, you, before you fell. Change your heart and do what you did at first. If you do not change, I will come and take away the lampstand from, your, from its place. You know, so some this is like a warning. Sometimes, when we we go off, as we are working for God, as we are going in life, God is we are being promoted. We are going on. It gets to a point that we lose that first love. We become complacent. We just go off. And sometimes God needs to use adversity to make us remember our first love, just to go back to to God again. So I, I believe that this. Um, pandemic season is, is more like a, a, a time that God is drawing us close back to himself. 
that's really what he's doing he's drawing us back to himself through this experience for most people we are praying more than we've ever prayed we are reading the bible more we are watching uh, sermons on the sofa all the every day which was not something that we did so all these things are drawing us close if we hadn't gone through this difficult uh, season we probably wouldn't be doing that but we are doing that now because we feel uh, and this is where we are and we need god more than ever before so god has brought us to this place so we are getting closer to him it's great hallelujah the next one number eight we go through what we go through the adversities you know because god could be protecting us from a bigger problem than the one that we are going through so maybe yeah you think this is difficult you that probably would have been worse you know somebody um, was in this, a little accident and they bruised their, their leg and they were very upset with God and that you know they were in line in hospital and they have their leg in uh, uh, POP and they are not very happy with God and everything they don't they don't realize that that accident that God brought was the initial accident that was saving him from the second accident along the journey closer to the destination that would have been fatal that he would have lost his life now he just has a a few days to lie in bed with the pop you know for a couple of weeks you know and they are upset you know so we sometimes god goes takes us to one difficult time trial or difficult difficult season to just because he's there's a future worst calamity coming that he's delivered us from and we don't know Psalm 121 verse 5 to 8 says that the Lord guides you the Lord is your shade that protects you from the sun the sun cannot hurt you during the day and the moon cannot hurt you at night the Lord will protect you from all dangers he will guard you guard your life the Lord will guide you as you come and go both now and forever amen you see he's protecting us so sometimes let, let's trust God let's trust that even things could have been worse than it is now things could have been worse than it is now in Psalm 9 verse 7 to 10 say that the Lord rules forever he sits on the throne to judge and he will judge the world in fairness he will decide what is fair for all the nations the lord defends those who suffers he defends them in all times of troubles in times of trouble those who know their lord those who know the lord trust in him because he will not leave those who come to him hallelujah so let, let us trust let us trust god in psalm 37 verse 5 there was a commit everything to god and do Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him and He will help you. That's simple, isn't it? Trust God. Let's trust God and He will help help us. He will deliver us. He will keep us. He has kept us up to this point and He will yet keep us. So let's trust Him. Let's, you know, put all our faith and trust in Him. Even when we are going through difficulties, let's remember that He is with us. He knows what is best. And if this is what we are going through, then the name of God be praised. Be praised. In, in Job, Job said something that the Lord has given, the Lord has taken. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He was the one who gave in the first place. So if he has taken it, blessed be the name of the Lord. In everything, let's thank God, let's praise God, for this is the will of God concerning us. Let's trust him. Let's give him glory. Then ninth one, then number nine. So we can share in the sufferings of Christ. We go through our own trials so that we can become like Jesus. You know, he said that he did not uh, he did not suffer his own son to go through afflictions for our, our, our sake. He made him go through it. So sometimes we need to go through afflictions, you know, so that we we'll share in the, in partake in the sonship. In First Peter four twelve, the Bible said, "Dear friends." Do not be surprised at the fairy ordeal that has come on you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. Verse 30 says, But rejoice in as much as you are partaking the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. 
If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief, nor any kind of criminal, or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. So, we share in the suffering of Christ. When we go through our sufferings, then we look more like him. In uh, first Corin- in 2 Corinthians 1, 5 to 7, therefore, just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm. Because we know that just as we, you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Now, this is Paul talking about, you know, when we are suffering, we are suffering for your sake. Sometimes you, we go through sufferings, persecutions as Christians for the sake of others. And, and it, it's, it's so that we look more like Christ. You know, Christ suffered for all of us for the apostles and now the apostle Paul is saying that I am suffering for your sake so that you can partake in the joy you, have, you partake in my suffering you partake in the discouragement whatever I go through you you are partaking in it so that the glory also becomes yours hallelujah the tenth one for that's the last one for today we are going to look at is that it helps us to grow as believers and become more like Christ you know we just said all things work together for the good of them that are loved by the Lord, Romans 8, 28, and are called according to his, his purpose in his plan. The 29th verse says that, And God knew them before he made the world, and he chose them to be like his son, so that Jesus would be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters, you know, so that we become more like him. So all things will work for our good. They, we go through difficulties, we go through hardship, but they're working for our good. So we become more like him. In Philippians 1, 6, it says that, And I am certain that God who began a good work within you will continue his work until he finishes, fin- he finally finishes on the day when Jesus returns. You know, he has begun a good work in you and he will complete it. He will complete it. All these things that we are going through, it's going to work for our good. And our faith will become better. You know, I believe, and I've always said this, I believe that the church of God will, will rise and become stronger and better because of what we have gone through. Because of what we are going through, we will come out better. We will come back stronger, you know, so that we will not, this will not destroy us. This uh, pandemic lockdown will not destroy the church of God. The church of God becomes stronger. And you are going to become stronger. As a Christian, you are going to become better, you know, because of what we have gone through, you know. In First uh, Corinthians 11, 1, that be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Imitate us. Paul went through a lot of adversity. He said that I suffered many things. I suffered, you know, being beaten, uh, uh, you know, 49 stripes, save one. I, I went through in ships, in shipwrecks often, in advertisements of false brothers and everything. Uh, we, we, what shall separate me from the love of God? All persecutions and everything. We, we are killed all day long. We've gone through all these things and we keep going through them, you know. And, and that will not separate us from the love of God. It will not separate us from our, our uh, devotion and our service to God. This should make us, even the sufferings and trials are supposed to make us stronger, are supposed to make us better people. And I, I want to encourage all of us that even as we're going through all the difficulties that we are going through, and the difficulties that we will be going through in the near future, it shouldn't stop us from trusting God. It shouldn't stop us from believing in Him. It shouldn't stop us from, you know, faithfully serving Him. You know, like Job, though He slays me, yet will I trust him let's keep trusting god let's keep serving god let's keep praising god let's keep believing in him shall we pray 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brother and my sister. I thank you for this time. I pray for the word that they have heard today, that it will encourage all of us to understand that our trials doesn't mean God has abandoned us. Our difficulty doesn't mean that God is not listening to our prayers anymore. But all these things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord, for them that are called according to his purpose, Lord. Help us to stay strong and be found faithful even through the difficulties, even through the changing seasons of life. We will still stay strong. We will still stay believing in God. Father, I pray that even as the church of God emerge out of lockdown, that the church will come back stronger, will come back better than it ever went into lockdown. That the members of the church, the Father, the Christians of God will become more faithful in serving you, more faithful in their belief, in their service, in their prayer to you, O Lord. That you draw us closer to you in the name of Jesus. I thank you for your word. I thank you for my brother and my sister. Whatever they are going through, I pray, O God, that you give them an upper hand, O oh God, and you show them a talking for good in Jesus' name. We give you glory. We we'll bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. I trust you've been blessed. I trust you've learned something. I want to encourage you to keep serving God and keep pushing. It doesn't matter what, what the world brings, what happens to tomorrow and or the next day. It shouldn't change and shouldn't separate us from the love of God. I, I trust that we will still persevere and still serve. Let the world, of, the world around us see us serving God in spite of all we are going through. And I believe that they will be converted because of our faith. God bless you. Shalom. Peace. Hi, brothers and sisters. I trust you are well. I trust you are keeping safe. As you all know, the UK government announced that as of the 4th of July, churches are allowed to open their premises for on-site worship. And we at Calvary International Christian Center are excited to announce to you that our church premises will be open from Sunday the 2nd of August at 11 o'clock for on-site worship. We have been working behind the scenes very hard to meet all the protocols and regulations that the, the government has put in place to ensure your safety and your health uh, is maintained when, whilst you are with us in, in church. Um, all the protocols have been met so you are safe. Just make sure you come along with um, your face mask and that's all. We provide everything else. We are looking forward to having a, a good fellowship with you. Come with expectation. Come and meet God. God bless you. Shalom. Peace.